بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Dear viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته It's an honor to be amongst you discussing the holy verses of Quran and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the blessings of the Holy Quran and the shrines of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam and Abul Fadl Abbas alayhi salam to bless us more to be able to bring the verses of the Holy Quran within our lives and insha'Allah to enhance our lives. Alhamdulillah, we have started Surah Al Baqarah, we finished uh, with Surah Al Hamd and insha'Allah starting Surah Al Baqarah. We discussed about it in the previous episode. Insha'Allah, we will continue. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, Alif Lam Mim. As we said, 29 chapters of the Holy Quran has been started, has started uh, with Huruf al muqatta broken words basically, which there are different uh, discussion has been made around the meaning of these words. Uh, one of them that unanimously they agree that it shows, it wants to show the importance of the Quran after using these words which it seems to us that it doesn't have a meaning. Alif by itself doesn't have any meaning. meaning. Lam doesn't have any meaning by itself. And Meem, it doesn't have any meaning by itself. Even putting it together, Alif, Lam, Meem by itself, it doesn't have a meaning that we can extract. Rather, what we see after every time within those 29 times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought Huruf al muqatta the broken words, He talks about the Qur'an and the value of the Qur'an and the greatness of the Qur'an. For example here, Alif, Lam, Mim, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ This is the book after Alif, Lam, Mim. So right away Allah talks about the Holy Qur'an, that there is no doubt in it and it's a guidance to the pious. So it shows unanimously commentators agree that after it, it's trying to make it huge uh, announcement basically, an important announcement about the holy verses of Quran and is bringing our attention to the verse after it. One commentator has given a nice analogy uh, about why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings this and what is the meaning. There are many different meaning has been given that why Allah brought these words, couple of words together next to one another, which to us it doesn't seem to mean anything. He, the analogy is that, for example, you have a computer that everybody has access to this computer and they can take benefit from its softwares and from what it can do basically, surf the internet and have, they have some basic access to the softwares and the programs within the laptop. But there is a hard drive in it that uh, has thousands and thousands of files and millions and millions and millions of inf pages of information in it. However, due to the uh, importance of these information, only few people have password to, op to opening this, in order to open this file and to be able to take advantage of this computer more. For example, uh, if you have only one or two softwares, your, and you don't have internet, for example, your laptop and the usage of laptop will be limited to only those two or three softwares. But if you have internet connected to your laptop, you have more access, your limitation is removed. And if you have a hard drive, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of gigabytes information, how much more you will be able to gain and benefit and rather to be limited to this one or two softwares. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they understand, the commentators understanding of these words that these words are the passwords, the true knowledge of Qur'an, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has communicated this with Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salam. They are the one who truly understand these passwords that they are, and they are able to uh, insert the password and extract the true meanings of the Holy Qur'an, which we don't know. The more we try, the more we, the science advances, we get to know ex uh, more of what Qur'an trying to communicate with us. 
also another example that can bring it closer to our mind, like for example, in uh, government clearances. Every rank has different clearance. Every rank has uh, this clearance or for the amount of information that they can access. The higher your rank goes, the higher, uh, the more information you're able to comprehend and get. For example, if somebody's a starter, the password that he uses gives him X amount of like, certain amount of allowance and certain amount of knowledge that he can access. And we see, for example, within the movies and series that, for example, they say, this is beyond my clearance. I don't have access to this much information. So he doesn't have that password. So these words, حروف المقطعة, one of the uh, commentators are discussing that it is about secret that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the password that he has given to Ahlul Bayt, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa in order for them to understand the Holy Quran and to be able to teach us and educate us. Another uh, meaning that has been given to these words that are beginning of 29 chapters of the Holy Quran, it's uh, within Tafsir al-Burhan, we see a narration by the commander of the faithful, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, where he says, عن, عن علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام أنه قال الإمام says فقال الله ألف لام ميم الله has said ألف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب أي يا محمد that book uh, uh, means O oh, oh Muhammad هذا الكتاب الذي أنزلته عليك this is the book that I have revealed upon you هو الحروف المقطعة that this book the Holy Quran is nothing rather but words that I have put it together. Alati minha alif, lam, meem, wa huwa What I have, the Quran is made of words, alif, lam, meem, and different words, different alphabets within the Quran. It's all made of alphabets. So, wa huwa It's from your own words and your own language. Wa hurufe hijaikum. And it's the words that you pronounce. I use the same words that you pronounce, and I made this Quran. فَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Bring me an example, bring like this Quran, if you are truthful. You see that you can, and people during the time of the Holy Prophet, and even now that people argue against the Book of Allah, that there is not that much, there is not, not that much significant within the Holy Quran. Allah says, well, I use your own words that you use on a daily basis. I use it to make, uh, to come up with a miracle. That every day, as we said, as much as science advances, they get to understand the knowledge of the Holy Quran. And get as much witness and as much help and aid as you want in order to use the same words and same alphabet and come up with this miracle that I have revealed. We see this in Tafsir al-Burhan. One lesson that we can extract an action plan that we can extract from just Alif Lam Meme and the hadith and the narration that we just read from the commander of the faithful Amir al-Mu'mini Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam where he says it's this miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's from words and alphabets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one lesson that we can learn is that in order to accomplish our big dreams in order to accomplish higher goals, bigger goals in our lives, we don't need immense, gigantic elements and materials to accomplish them. With small little things, we can start some, we can start if it's a business, if it's about a personal growth and development, we don't need, again, gigantic tools and elements and materials in order for us to accomplish. With small things, with things that we have access to, we can accomplish. For example, I decide that I want to introduce people and educate people and disseminate the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt but I don't have sheikh, I don't have money, I don't have organization, I need uh, office, I need... You can start with your phone. Something that nowadays everybody has it something that we can use and we can. I sent a picture to a broadcast that I have that this day and age, a phone of every followers of Ahlul Bayt should be the tool 
and disseminating the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt السلام, and introducing people about the Imam of our time, Imam Mahdi Ajrallah Ta'ala Faraj al Sharif. With one Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, all these small little things, it, it doesn't cost us anything. But if we have the mindset, if we have the intention, if we have this fire within us that we are really want, we really want people to uh, be informed and educated about the teachings of Ahlul Bayt and the Quran, well, we will use whatever at our exposure and our hands to teach it. Allah says, I use words to come up with a miracles for our own personal development. For example, I want to, I'm going to be very, very tangible and very, very low. I want to start, for example, losing weight. Okay, I need to go to the gym. Oh, I don't have money. And again, excuses. New Year's resolution comes. I want to lose X amount of uh, weight. I need to go to the gym, the best gym. I need to enter, uh, uh, register myself in this gym, in this program, and do this, do this. No, small little things. Amir al-Mu'mini, for example, commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, when he advises Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam, he says, if you don't want to get sick, and you basically, you want to be fed and don't get sick, don't eat food until you're really hungry, and stop while you're still hungry. Something basic, something very simple. Again, for achieving what we're trying to achieve. We want to start a business. Oh, Sheikh, I don't have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to start a business. You can start business without even having any money. If you are really dedicated, if you are really, you want to accomplish, you want to become a billionaire that inshallah you use your money to serve the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't need, you don't need to start with big. No, you can start small and slowly, slowly, slowly grow. That I, I think this is a very, very good action plan that we can learn. That with whatever that we have at our disposal, we can accomplish great amount of achievements within again business, personal development, personal growth, religiosity. Oh, I want to gain religion, for example. I want to be more religious. I need to have hundreds of books. I need to do this. this. No, no, start with one lecture a day. 15 to 20 minutes of reading a day. One hadith a day I read about from the lives of Ahlul Bayt and I think about it and I ponder about it and I apply it into my life and then I go next hadith and next hadith and next hadith. You see again, as we have said, this was our action plan within the previous episode. After one year, you have memorized and learned and practiced and act upon 365 narrations of Ahlul Bayt which you can see how it revolutionizes your life to a better inshallah so action plan b when we want to accomplish something no excuses oh i don't have this i don't have this no with small elements with small materials with little small materials we can accomplish big things let us move on alif bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim alif lam mim dhalikal kitab la rayba fih the most of the translation unfortunately says dhalika they say this book this is the book. Within the Arabic language, ذَلِكَ اسمُ إِشَارَةً It's when you appoint to something far, not something near that is tangible. Something that is near and tangible, you call it هَذَا This. ذَلِكَ is something that is far. So why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using ذَلِكَ It's the Quran that we have in our hands. Why He uses ذَلِكَ and not هَذَا Many answers have been given. We have picked some of them, inshallah. We will discuss it. Number one, within the holy verses of Quran and within the Arabic culture, and also I see this within the Farsi uh, culture, the language, Farsi culture. For example, if within the Farsi, and we'll come to this, when you want to address someone, to, for those who speak Farsi, they understand me, to means you. But when you want to honor him, you want to glorify him, you want to show respect, you don't tell him to, you tell him shama. In English, both of them would be you. There is no, but in, in Farsi, it has more. In Arabic, even has more language when you want to respect someone. When you want to respect someone, you call them as, uh, you don't call them singular, you call them plural. Within the Quran, it's about honoring the book. It's about the glorifying, exalting this book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ So that's one interpretation, one meaning of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
used dhalika rather than hadha and dha. Basically, this is the book. No, the translation again doesn't do uh, justice when it says this is the book. No, it's not this is the book. That is the book. Dhalika. And again, because it is very high. It has very high status that it should be called and should be glorified as that. Another meaning that has been given that people are not able to reach and comprehend the true meaning of the Holy Quran, which is far from them. We read the Quran, which we have been recommended, and we have been recommended to ponder and think and try to understand as much as possible. So basically, but unfortunately, it's about the meaning that the actual the meaning that we don't have access to, the true meaning of the Holy Quran is very, very far from our understanding. No matter how much we try, which we should, and we should put our time into it, we won't be able to get the true meaning of it. So the true meaning, Dalika, is referring to the true meaning of the Holy Quran, which is far from us. Which Quran has many meanings, depth and layers and layers and layers of uh, information and meanings are within the Holy Quran as Ahl Bayt have said. So that it's referring to the meaning rather than the actual book which is within our hands. There's more to this into this discussion inshallah. We leave it for the next episode. We will conclude by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, with the most important dua and that is to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam, Imam Mahdi ajrullah ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى أبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين